Now on top of here, what you may want to do is like molly stitches so that you can uh, just kind of place it on here. Uh, there, you can make an insert mesh brush that'll do molly for you. Um, things like molly and straps, I tend to just use topology brush for. It's not that hard to kind of get it on there. It gives me a little bit more control. So the problem with that is if I go to BTO and I try to like draw out molly, it's going to be like, hey, it's got subdivision levels. You can't do that. So what you need to do is either find a subtool that doesn't or what I usually have is a null that I have at the top of my um, ZBrush file. So if I go to save this here, and I want to save this as test to is toast. When I save a file, that first subtool is going to be renamed. So when I go start set renaming these things for baking purposes, I don't want to have my file name overriding my bake name. So I'll just put a null node in here. And the cool thing about having a null node is when I scale this down, go into transparency mode, I can just hide that inside. This is just a non, it's just a uh, geometry piece of geometry sitting there with no subdivision history. So if I have that active and then go to BTO, I can now go through here and I can put on some molly stitching or some straps. So let's start with a strap first because that's easier. Let's say you want to put a strap across her chest right, right here. Um, if you want to do it in symmetry, tap X since your null node's right in the middle. Uh, you can have symmetry on. Uh, when I'm using the topology brush, symmetry kind of throws me for a loop. You know, I kind of have issues with the midline. So what I'll end up doing is even if it's symmetrical, I'll have symmetry out by tapping X. And then it's like, okay, I want a strap across here. I'm going to put a strap across here. And then uh, I'll go just slightly over that midline. And then I'll just start drawing these lines out. This is the topology brush. This might be older than ZBrush 4R8. I'm not sure if I have video. I mean, I do have videos on this. Just do topology brush on my YouTube channel. You can find this stuff or anywhere on the internet. Anybody will have this. Uh, when you draw your topology, wherever you cross over these lines, it'll make a new mesh. If you hold down Alt and drag, it'll clean that mesh up for you. You can continue lines off of these ones and continue to draw. You can even make triangles if you want to. Triangles if you want to. What I found, what helps, and you'll notice how I did this one, is overshooting and also making your brush size a little bit bigger than you think it should be. If you overshoot and just draw over, and you don't have to be perfect, like you can make squiggly lines and it's just that point and that point that gets calculated. All these squigglies don't really matter unless you come across here and then, you know, start dividing up your topology and then it starts mattering. So go through here, make your lines. Uh, anything else with a topology brush that's important? Yeah, probably, but we're going quick here. Again, we're machine gunning this. So I'm going to hold down Alt and just clean this up a little bit. If I tap, it's going to take my brush size into account for how thick it is. So I can hold down a control or do Control Z, make my brush size smaller and tap that and tap off. And there we go. Now, this is really easy to change the thickness. But also remember, if I go into solo mode, when I'm doing topology brush, it's masking this. It's like doing an insert mesh. So I, it masks my original mesh here, and then it lets me draw this. So what I'm going to do is under Subtool, I can do Split Unmask Points. That'll make me a little copy of this. I'm going to hold down Shift, Bent Arrow, shoot it down to the bottom, turn off Solo, and now I've got my strap here. Now I want it symmetrical, so let's go in our Z Modeler Brush, BZM, hover over an edge, insert single edge loop, hold down Alt, let's get rid of that one, because what I'm going to do is a mirror and weld. Now if I do a mirror and weld now, it's going to mirror negative X, let's turn on our floor, negative x to positive x so it took the stumpy side and mirrored it not what i wanted so what you need to do is go into deformation mirror across the x and then mirror and weld across the x and then turn on x for x symmetry and you're good to go now you can see mirror and mirror and weld really close together really nice it's in my custom menu up here and i have it assigned to a hotkey so it's like a marking menu you want more info on that that is intro to zbrush part one and part two in my playlists I'm sorry, Intro to ZBrush Part 2 on my playlist here. We'll get you that. Um, yeah. So that'll get you your custom playlist and hotkeys and stuff like that. Uh, and the reason why is because you'd have to go down here to Deformation and do a mirror and then go up here to Geometry, Modify Topology, Mirror and Weld in order to do these two operations, which I do all the time. See how they're flashing on and off over there? So use your, use your hotkeys and stuff. So we can go to Uncrease All here. Um, we can straighten this out a little bit. You can be fancier with your straightening if you want them exactly straight. You can go into your floor here and you can like mask these top points here. You can hold down Alt and tap a, a single point. We have X turned turn on. Let's go ahead and reset this. So you can kind of match this here and then you can just do like a Z scale to make those flat, but we're not going to worry too much about that. 
Also, topology brush. Oh, that's one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, so with this topology brush, it doesn't have subdivision. Let's do another BTO. Uh, if you wanted to go like across, like from her arm to her body, topology brush probably isn't the best way to do it because it is going to conform to the body. Um, also, if you decide to go, hey, you know what? I mean, I guess you could, but as soon as you start drawing another line, it's going to suck in. So the topology brush is only going to connect dots, and it's going to disregard the rest of the line. So if you need, if you want more resolution, you have to add resolution to get, you know, inside there. Uh, if you don't, then just ignore it and just tap off, and then there's your geometry. Um, alternatively, I would probably use Z-Spheres topology to do this type of stuff, but I'll leave that up to you. Uh, so we've got a strap here. And uh, I don't know why I put a strap like this, but let's say it goes across her body and then it loops over and then it puts a little um, nubbin there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this out just a little bit. And so we want these to roll back over. So I've got this here. I'm going to go into Q Mesh, a single poly, and we're just going to hold down Control and pop off a copy of this thing and then continue to Q Mesh. Now if I want these to be thinner, all i got to do is Q Mesh, uh, Poly Group Island, and then again, hold down Shift and push along that surface normal. And if I want to move this back, I can hold down Shift to push along that surface normal. And then same thing here. And then if I want to loop these together, I'm going to say, let's just do Delete a single poly, bam, bam. And then if you want to see both sides, I like to turn on Double temporarily. So go down here, Display Properties, turn on Double. Uh, make sure you turn that back off. It'll throw you for a loop sometimes. We're going to go to Bridge to Holes. We'll keep it on Spline. There's a lot of really cool bridge options in there, but just interactive elevation and spline is fine. If we want to push these back, we can hit W to go into uh, gizmo mode, hold down control, and as you drag along your object, it'll auto mask for you. So now you can just go in here with your move brush, or you can go into your move brush, B, M, you can move topological, or you can go into your move brush, and then under auto masking, you can say topological, pull that range down, and then you can just move these points separately. So. A lot of different ways to skin that cat. Uh, now at this point, you can go in here. I'm going to do, if you do crease polygroup, you got a lot of polygroups going on here. If you want to clean this up a little bit, you can hit Control W. You can try doing a group by normals, but you may get some polygroups in here that you got to kind of play with that number a little bit. What I'll do is hold down Control Shift, hit Control W, all one polygroup. Control Shift, select Lasso, and that's got a feature in it where it'll grab a single edge ring. So if you do select lasso on an edge, it'll grab the whole thing. So now on this one, we can do auto groups and then control shift drag, control W. And now we have inside and outside. Wait, it should be, hold on. Let's do this also. Oh, that's another thing too. So if we hit D for dynamic subdivision, that gives us our preview, geometry, dynamic subdivisions. Uh, so we turn on dynamic, this gives us a preview. If we go through here to our crease menu, which I use all the time in conjunction with dynamic subdivision, we'll say uh, hit crease, and that'll go through and crease our object based on an angle tolerance. If we increase that, we'll do uncrease all, and then crease again, we can uncrease that one. And this gives pretty good representation. I like to do a crease level of usually like three, smooth subdivision of four, and that'll put in a little built-in bevel. Uh, it's not real subdivision, so I can always do shift D, and I can hop back out, and I can go through here, and I can add more geometry. So if I hit D, this gives me my preview. And let's say, you know what? I want this to be not creased up here. So I'm going to hover over this. We have X symmetry turned on. So I'm going to hover over this edge, and we'll say crease, edge, hold down Alt, and we'll uncrease these two. And get this little round thing. And it's like, okay, that's pretty round, but I don't want it that round. Well, you still have control in here where you can go hover over an edge, insert single edge loop, and you can just put in a control edge, and you can kind of tighten these corners up a little bit on both sides. Now you hit Shift D. Uh, also, if you wanted to, you could also like say polygroup, poly loop, and you can polygroup these things, and then you can do like an extrude, polygroup all, and you can make thickness. Or what I would probably do in this case, like we did with the vest, I'd probably take these ones here and do extrude, polygroup all, and then do another extrude here, or maybe a polygroup island and give it some thickness here if you wanted to put like a little ridge around it or something. Uh, and you can do it on the side as well. So I'll leave that up to you, but simple strap. And then of course you can go to like brush insert. Let's do clothing. Where's the clothing at? Clothing. M, snap assembly, throw that in there, stick it back in there. You can also use the depth setting on your brush if you don't want to do that every time. But um, now if you're going to do again, scaling across an axis, turn on local L sim so you can scale locally. And now you've got a little brush assembly here. And now since this is clothing, 
Um, oops, let's go ahead and do another um, split on mass points. That'll split that little button assembly down. And then on this one here, I'm going to do Shift D to turn off dynamic. And we'll hit Control D, Control D. And then we'll do an uncrease all, and then Control D. And now we've got a little bevel. We can hit Control D again. And then now we can actually have something to like sculpt across here. You get through here, and you can like. I don't know, whatever sculpting you want to do. Now, if you want to sculpt through here, you can do transparency with ghost on, and that'll allow you to kind of sculpt through this object. You can build up around it here. I don't know, however you want to do that. So, you got straps in there. 